Uh, hopefully the others will be coming in soon. Uh, let me get the share screen set up um, for whiteboard. And why they put these taskbars in the white space. They have plenty of room at the top and bottom they can put them, but they put them smack in the way. Uh, so I have to move them both. So I have some room to work and scoot the whiteboard to get it as far to the up and left as possible. And then I'll scoot the two of us over to the right as far as possible. Okay. <clears throat> Well, let's go back to the book. All right, and again, I'll wait until more people show up to go over how we'll wind up stuff. But two of you heard that last time, so uh, it's nothing too new there. Okay, if you have no questions, and I hope I'm not blocking my vision of anyone trying to get in the room. Nope, just the two of us. Uh, let's sort of go over what we did last time. Um, section 4.3 dealt with homogeneous linear higher order equations with constant coefficients. Okay. 4.4 is dealing with what do you do when you have the non-homogeneous case. In other words, you do have a higher order differential equation on the left, but in 4.3 we always had a zero over here on the right. Okay, now we've got some function of x over here. Now it's got to be a function of x alone. No y's can be here. If there are any y's, they need to be connected with that term. There can't be any y primes. They would have to be connected with those that term. Or y double prime would have to be moved over here. You can only have x's and numbers, basically, over here. Operations, okay, too. Now, we are limited with what operations we can deal with. And we'll get to that a little bit later. We talked about it some last time. Okay? And we started solving this differential equation y double prime plus 4y prime minus 2y is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay? Now, the first part we did last time. We did the homogeneous case. Okay? Forget this, what they've been calling g of x here, put a zero in its place like they did here. That then, just like in 4.3, led to a, uh, this is a differential equation with constant coefficients, that led to a quadratic equation or a polynomial equation uh, in M, where M was, and I wish they had phrased this, uh, always your assumption when you have constant coefficients, linear equations, constant coefficients, your solution is y is equal to e to the mx, okay? So that's where the m's come from. That's the coefficient of the x variable, the deep independent variable of your exponential function, okay? So this becomes m squared plus 4m minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, when we did the quadratic formula on that, because factoring wasn't going to work on that one, we wound up with a rational form. No, irrational form, okay? But a real form. M1 was minus 2 minus square root of 6. M2 was minus 2 plus the square root of 6, okay? So the complementary function was y sub c, okay? is equal to c1 e to the minus, they put the, pulled the minus sign out from here, minus 2 plus root 6x plus c2 e to the minus 2 plus root 6x. That 
minuses inside the parentheses. Now, why they chose to do that, I don't know. It doesn't matter. You could have left the parentheses here and put the minus 2 minus root 6x. It would have been just as good. All right. Now, that we did last time. That's where we pick up this time. Now, because the function g of x is a quadratic polynomial, okay, you expect the particular solution to at least be that. Now, the particular solution, you'd better not have any uh, x cubes in it because you can't get rid of them. You know, when you multiply by that, there's no way to get rid of an x cube. So it can't be any higher, but it has to be at least as high a degree as this one and include every term. Now, this isn't because there were every term included here. If all you'd have had here was a 2x squared, you still would have done a ax squared plus bx plus c. If all you'd have had here was a 2x squared minus 3x without the constant, you still include the constant down here, ax squared plus bx plus c. If you had skipped the middle term here, uh, minus 3x had a 2x squared plus 6, you still put ax squared plus bx plus c. You have your full polynomial of degree that, uh, of, of the maximum degree here. Now that's what you do for polynomial functions, particular solutions. Now, what we're trying to do is find, and this is called undetermined coefficients, there are the coefficients. We don't know what they are. Those are your undetermined coefficients, A, B, and C. So we're trying to determine those specific coefficients for which YP is a solution for that. If YP is a solution for this differential equation, what we've got to do is write down YP, take the first derivative of YP, and take the second derivative of YP and plug those in. So let's go to our white page and start doing that. Okay. Now let me just check and make sure nobody else is coming in. Uh, wrong slide. Okay. Not just the two of us still. Okay. <clears throat> now. Downstairs, where my wife didn't have the heat on as high as I did up here because she was all bundled up, and so my hands are cold. And then, too, the uh, anemia I have just makes me even more sensitive to, to cold temperatures and stuff. So, sorry about that. Uh, but every now and then, I've just got to stop and, and hold my own hands, just trying to warm up a little bit. Okay, so let me pick up where we were there. Here is the problem, if I could get my pad, is y double prime plus 4y prime minus 2y is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay. Now, let me just write down the stuff we've already done. Not how we did it, but how we, you know what it is. We know our characteristic solution, y sub c, is equal to uh, C1 e to the, I guess I'll write it the same way they do, though I don't know why they did it, minus 2 plus root 6 x plus C2 e to the um, parentheses minus 2 plus root 6 x. Okay, there's your characteristic solution. Okay? I'm sorry, complementary solution. 
don't know why I always confuse those two words. Okay, so what we're going to do now is find out here is we assumed a particular solution that will satisfy this differential equation that'll be y sub p is going to be of the form of this a polynomial with at least that degree and all the terms accounted for ax squared plus bx plus c now set the book aside here I don't need it anymore I really didn't need it past that other but I was holding it in my lap now this particular solution must satisfy the entire differential equation this complementary solution only satisfied the left hand side when that was written as a homogeneous differential equation so that was when this part over here was equal to zero we've now got to figure out what a form like this will do when this is really in existence so what we've got to do here take a derivative y sub p prime and that would be 2 a x plus b lose the c y particular double prime second derivative of that particular solution would be 2a. All right. Now we plug these values in up here and set it equal to that. So this is going to be a 2a plus 4 times this thing. Okay. Y prime. So that would be times 2a x plus b minus 2 times the original particular solution. Uh, I'm going to write it 2 times a x squared plus b x plus c. And that is supposed to equal 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay, so this will be 2a plus 8ax plus or B distributing across minus 2 a X squared minus 2 B X minus 2 C and that's supposed to equal 2 X squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay. Man, this is bad. This early in the class to be starting to get dizzy feeling. Let me get a little caffeine in me and sugar. Part of the problem I was cramming down my second part of my lunch as fast as I could because we had interruptions in my first part and I didn't drink enough so that's another issue all right now let's start comparing terms okay on this side the only x squared term is this one right here and that says that 2a has to equal the only x squared the coefficient for the only x squared term here and that's 2 so minus 2a is equal to 2 divide both sides by minus 2 
and you have a is equal to negative 1. Okay, we've determined one coefficient. Let's do the next one. There are two terms here that have our coefficients for x. That's 8a x minus 2bx. So that says that 8a, which is minus 8, since we know a is already negative 1, minus 2b, or not to be, is equal to negative 3. Well, one thing I'm going to do is get rid of all those minuses, okay? Okay, and that gives us um, 2b is equal to minus 5, so b is equal to minus 5 halves. Okay, let's make sure I'm going right before we get too deeply involved here. A is equal to negative 1, B is equal to negative 5 halves. Good so far. All right, now let's go to the constant terms. Okay, here we have a constant term here 2A plus 4B minus 2C. And they have to equal to 6. Well, A is negative 1. So that's a negative 2. B is negative 5 halves. So that would be a minus 10. Minus 2C has to equal 6. The only constant over here. Okay, this was that circular term there, the linear term there. Okay, so what does this give us? This is a minus 12. Add that to both sides, you get an 18. 12 and 18. Minus 2c is equal to 18. And c is equal to minus 9. Let's see if that's what they got. I believe so. So, that just gives you your undetermined coefficients. You've now determined them. So, what is your solution? Your solution is y sub c, the complementary solution, plus the particular solution with those values placed in here. So, let me go on and do that here. So, this will be a minus x squared minus 5 halves x minus 9 that is your y particular so now we'll get the y complementary plus the y particular and that's equal to that that is your solution solution is the sum of those two so your general solution if I can find my pen here, there it is. Y is equal to, let's start with this one. It doesn't matter where you start, but let's do it. C1, these are your arbitrary coefficients. You got to have two of them because you got second degree uh, differential equation. We got it, second order differential equation. E, or C1, E to the minus 2 plus root 6 x plus c2 there's our two arbitrary coefficients e to the minus 2 plus 6 x that's root 6 goodness gracious this thing is so aggravating the parentheses there minus uh, particular solution 
minus x squared minus 5 halves x minus 9. There is your general solution for that differential equation with non-homogeneous differential equation. Okay. So the general solution is C1 e to the Oh wait, I'm on the wrong problem. How did I get over there? Oh, okay. I'm on the wrong page. That's what it was. Is C1 e to the minus 2 plus root 6 x plus C2 e to the in parentheses minus 2 plus root 6 x minus x squared minus 5 has x minus 9. Okay, any questions on that one? That was example one. Started up, excuse me, page 143 and moved to the top of 144. All right, let's go back to the book and I'll move y'all again, move us again can't believe still nobody here but the two of us and this is the last week of class I just find that hard to believe <clears throat> all right so this is step two where we picked up there's a particular solution uh, we took the first derivative of it second derivative of it plugged it in here for that first second derivative plus four times that first derivative plus a particular solution and see what it ended up and it was yeah the left hand side equal the right hand side when you plugged all these three elements into the left hand side and set the right hand side equal to that and because the last equation is supposed to be an identity, the coefficients of like powers must be equal. So the only x squared one was minus 2a equal 2. That gave a equal minus 1. The only linear ones were 8a minus 2b equal to negative 3. But 8a... Okay. Now, <laughs> why they did it this way, I'm not sure. It's Everything they're saying is right. They're just not showing how they got it. Uh, if you already know that a is negative 1, which you should know right here, then plug in a negative 1 here, and that makes it real easy to solve for b. It's negative 5 halves. And then once you have a and b, plug those in for a and b here that you get from your last one okay and that's supposed to equal the six and it winds up with c equal negative three so now that you know your particular solution is minus a squared minus five halves x minus x squared minus five halves x minus nine from those three then the general solution of the given equation is general solution y is equal to yc plus yp okay yc is complementary yp is particular the complementary part c1 e to the minus 2 plus root 6 x plus c2 times e to the minus 2 plus 6 x root 6 x and then your particular minus 2 minus 5 halves at minus x squared minus 5 halves x minus 9. All right, so we're ready for example 2. If I could get my screen to move down for me. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to have another sip.
now it's partially thirst and partially dizziness but okay find a particular solution for y double prime minus y prime plus y is equal to 2 sine 3x okay we're going to start it just like we oh wait all they're asking for now is the particular solution not the general solution okay so we don't have to go through the uh, the C word complementary solution here and setting it equal to zero they're not asking for that they're just asking for a particular solution well what are when you take the function its first and its second derivatives what could lead to sines well some combination of sines and cosines now they won't necessarily be the same coefficients now if you remember back when we were doing case 3 wasn't it um, when we we're doing our homogeneous case and we came up with two complex roots and we did the Euler um, identity and stuff and made it into um, a um, sines and cosines remember then we were able you could have two different because they were c1 and c2 and they could be different well here again they're going to be different now the argument stays the same just like it does here the three x's stay the same but the coefficients can be different okay so i think we'll go to the whiteboard and do this problem okay which means clearing the whiteboard and moving us again over here to the left okay right sorry y'all can't see it anyway okay so here's what we're doing finding only the particular solution if I could get the pen to show up y double prime minus y prime plus y is equal to 2 sine 3x okay now all we're interested in is the particular solution we're not going to do the uh, complementary solution so therefore we will not get a general solution just looking for a particular so the particular solution for this in undetermined coefficients would be y is equal to a times and they usually start for some reason with cosine so just to keep with the book cosine 3x plus b it doesn't have to be the same letter there times the sine of 3x okay then what we're going to need to do is take a first and second derivative of those so y prime would then be derivative of a cosine is minus sine so this is going to have a minus chain rule is going to have a 3 in there so let's get that in there a times the sine of 3x okay plus derivative of sine is cosine so you can do uh, sorry folks I've got to have something to drink other than sweet see if water will make dilute that a little bit <clears throat> plus I don't know where that mark came from Let's see if we can get rid of it 
okay? Derivative of sine is cosine. The chain rule is going to give us a 3, so it would be 3b cosine 3x. Okay. Our y double prime is going to be derivative of sine is cosine, so, but you have a 3 times a minus 3, which is minus 9a times cosine. Yuck, this sorry thing. A 3x. That's a plus. Goodness gracious. Man, I'm feeling rotten. Let me see if I can slug through this. This morning went relatively well. Early morning went quite nicely. Middle of the day was a little tired, but boy, this afternoon I just... Okay, I was wrong on that. Um, I had it right before and I changed it on it. Yuck. Okay, derivative of cosine is minus sine, <clears throat> so this is going to change that to a minus. Your chain rule is going to give you a second 3 here, so 3 times 3 is 9b times the sine of 3x. All right, so there's your y double prime. Now, let's start filling in the gaps here. Our y double prime are these things, so we'll put that in place of this one. Minus 9a cosine 3x minus 9b sine of 3x. Goodness gracious, this pen is just nuts today. Okay, let's try that one more time. Can't get the x to look anything like an x. Okay, so that's your y double prime minus y sine, y prime. Well, the first one's going to be a minus, so that makes that a plus 3a sine of 3x. All right. Now, I'm so sorry. The minus here and the plus make that a minus 3b cosine 3x. And then finally the plus y, there's your y, plus a cosine 3x plus b sine. There it goes again. And the plus didn't take, did it? Plus b sine 3x. And all that's supposed to equal to 2 sine 3x. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious, what a day. Now, let's first do our cosines. Here we have a minus 9a times cosine 3x and there we have another one minus 3b times cosine 3x plus a 
times cosine 3x and that's supposed to equal 0. Now that gives you minus 8a minus 3b Okay, I can't get my pen to draw nicely. I'm sorry, I've got to go again. That's equal to zero. All right. Now, let's do the sine ones. We took care of that one. That one and that one. So the sine ones are minus 9b plus 3a plus b is equal to 2 because that's sine of 3x. Okay, this gives us, I'm going to rewrite the first one, minus 8a minus 3b is equal to 0, and this one would be uh, minus 8b three A Goodness this pen just isn't writing well. Okay, and that's equal to two. Okay. I'm so sorry. Just want to lay my head down and take a nap. I don't know what is going on here. I think I do know it's the anemia, but goodness gracious, I went this weekend doing a lot more than this and did not ever feel quite this wiped out. Of course, when I did sit down, I could fall asleep if I wanted to. I can't do that now. Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. Just still can't believe the other two guys haven't shown up yet. I want to make sure I haven't overlooked them. They're not. Okay, now this is a typical two equations, two unknowns. Okay, you did this probably back in algebra, in some early algebra course. Okay, and what you do with that <coughs> is eliminate a variable, and it's called elimination by addition. And since you have nothing really in common between these coefficients here and these coefficients here, what I prefer to do, they are of equal difficulty, both 8s and 3s, so they're almost identical except in different places. This one has a plus and minus, this has two minuses. I like always go with the opposite sign. Let's take this equation and multiply it by 8. Take this equation and multiply it by 3. So this gives you minus 24a minus 9b is equal to 0. Because multiply 0 by 3, you still get 0 and this A has a bar in it, okay? This gives you positive 24A, which is exactly what we were wanting to happen, okay? This gives you minus 64B, which is a mighty big number, is equal to 16, okay? 
8 times 2 is 16. Okay, when you add these two equations together, your a's disappear. Minus 24a plus 24a is 0. And what you have here is minus 73b is equal to 16. Weird number, but true. Divide by negative 73. And what you have is b is equal to 3 into a 2. I don't know. Okay, I hope I've got this right now. So b is equal to minus 16 70 thirds. Such a weird fraction. I'm going to check that and make sure that I haven't done something stupid. Oh, there it is. Minus 16 70 thirds. Okay, now that only gives you the b. I wish my pen would show up. It just keeps, there it goes. I don't like to call that equal. I like to say it leads to that. All right, now that we have that, let's take the simpler of these two equations here. It really doesn't matter all that much. Maybe the first equation is a little simpler. It does have two minus signs, but let's do it. That would be minus 8a minus 3 times 16 70 thirds. Well, that's going to be a plus 48 70 thirds. Okay, let me make sure I did that right. Minus 3 times 16, I think, is 48. Okay. And that was a minus and a minus, yeah. And that should equal 0. If I could get my pen to show up somewhere. There it is. Equal 0. Okay. And the 3 disappeared. I don't know why. Okay. So let's so move some things around. Make this 8a is equal to 48 70 thirds. What I did, move this to the other side and flip sides. Okay. Divide by 8 and that would be 6 70 thirds. Okay. Now, <laughs> I wish I had some more room. To keep from making it so crowded, it is so crowded, but to kind of alleviate some of that, let's just wipe out this row right here. We've already used it. We don't need it anymore. Let's open us up a little bit of space here, and it's kind of ugly anyway, and go back to the draw mode here and write down what our particular solution. Now I should have been this should have been a P, this should have been a P, sub P's here. I don't know why I left them out. Okay. So what is our particular solution? Y sub P is equal what was our A? Six seventy thirds cosine three x plus that's a minus. Goodness gracious, this is a pain in the neck. Okay, that is a minus because it's a plus b here and b was a minus here. Minus 1670 thirds
only it's no yeah that's right times the sine of three x. Goodness gracious this pen is just doing weird things. <laughs> so such a pain in the neck. Okay. Okay, so that's our particular solution. Oh man, 6 73rds cosine 3x minus 16 73rds sine 3x. And that's what they got in the book as well. All right, I'm so sorry folks. All right, let's go back to the book and see that indeed that is what they got. While I'm here, I'm going to just check to see it's still just Kara and me. Oh, man. I am so stinking tired. I've got so many things to do this evening, getting ready for tomorrow's four classes. And I think I've got a lab already for it, so hopefully I don't have to do that. So here's where we left off. Um, this was our particular solution. When you press the first, second, and third derivatives of that, they skip all those steps in there. They wound up with this, and the cosine parts was 8a minus 3b is equal to 0, and the sine part was 3a minus 8b was equal to 2. Okay? Now, those two differential equations, I mean, those two simultaneous equations that have to be solved simultaneously without showing you how to do it, they just say we get A is equal to 6 thirds and B is equal to negative 16 70 thirds. Exactly what we got, but I showed you how. And the particular solution is when you plug those back in to see if we can get it all on one screen. I'm not sure we can. Let's see if we can. Yep, there it is. The y particular is 6 73rds cosine 3x minus 16 73rds sine 3x. Okay. It said, as we mentioned, the form that we assume for the particular solution y sub p is an educated guess, but it's not a blind guess, okay? It's educated. It has some basis to it. The educated guess must also take into consideration not only the types of functions that make up g of x, but also, as we shall see in example 4, that the functions that make up the complementary solution y sub c. Because if you've already got that in your y sub c and that sort of fix, you can't have it showing up on the right-hand side too because then it's not independent from the others. I'm going to try one different thing here. I think I have one menthos left. Maybe that can give me enough. Well, I may have more than one left. This is amazing. This thing is really wrapped in here. Yeah, I have another one. Maybe this will help. Sorry, it's probably going to mess up my talking for a bit, but maybe it'll help. Okay. Okay. So here's example three. Well, they said in example four, but we got to do example three first. Let's solve this one. Okay. Seems like it's completely out of context with the others, but let's go to our whiteboard because definitely going to be a place for doing that. Okay. Clear this out of the way. Do you need it any longer? I hope not. Okay. Example 3, top of page 145. 
here we have y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y is equal to 4x minus 5 plus 6x e to the 2x. Okay. Now, again, all they're looking for is a particular solution. So let's make a guess what it might be. Okay. Y sub p. Let's take just this part here. That's a polynomial, first degree polynomial equation. So let's have a AX plus B plus. Now, here we have a first degree polynomial equation times an exponential equation. Okay. Now, there's a part of me that would think this needs to be uh, CX plus D times this because that's the coefficient for this part. Let's see if that's I don't know. Sorry about this, folks. Let's back off. Uh, they, even though they said just for fine y sub p, they decided to go on and do both of them, the character, or the complementary solution and the particular solution. So they're finding the general, even though they didn't say it. Before, when they said in example two, find the particular solution for that, they didn't mess, wait, yeah, they didn't mess with the complementary solution. This one they said, no, I'm sorry, I misread it. Sorry, I misread it. The title says forming y sub p by superposition, but this says solve the equation. When they say solve it, that means solve it completely. Okay, so sorry about that, I was wrong. So let's first do the complementary. y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y is equal to 0. That's the homogeneous part. Okay? You know the assumption here is y is equal to e to the mx. Always. No, sorry, I feel like I got a sneeze coming. I can partially blame that on the menthos. I forgot about that. Mint sometimes makes me sneeze. <coughs> and also it feels like it's getting chillier in here. And it looks awfully gray outside. So if you hold on just a moment, I'm going to go turn up the heat one notch. I'll be right back. Let me pause the recording there's no reason to have dead space there okay if I can get the no one showed up while I was gone unfortunately not I thought since James was there this morning he might make it this afternoon too but he didn't okay so there's the assumption so our auxiliary equation Remember, every time you take a derivative, you get another n, m out of it. So this will be an m squared minus 2m minus 3 equals 0. Okay? That is a factorable one. m minus 3 times m plus 1 equals 0. Now I say that. 
let's check it and see. M times M is M squared. That works. M times 1 is M. Minus 3M would be minus 2M plus uh, minus 3. That works. So our complementary solution is Y sub C is equal to um, C1 E to, oh, let me go on and solve this. M is equal to 3 or M is equal to negative 1. So C1 E to the <coughs> 3X plus C2 E to the minus X. There's the M of 3 and the M of minus 1. So there's our complementary solution. Okay. Now, as I was <coughs> saying, now this meant I was getting to me. I think the particular solution, y sub p, has got to have a linear polynomial equation. So let's make that a x plus b. plus I think another linear equation times that plus CX plus D times E to the 2X. Now let me see if my assumption there follows what they're doing. Yeah, they just didn't pose them the way I did. Now, one thing about the book, they never use the capital D. They use that as an operator, so you, they use an E. Okay? Now, so they would have written this, if I can erase judiciously, I don't know if I can, C x well I'll just erase it all cx e to the 2x plus and they don't use c d so they they e e to the 2x now yeah Now, what you have to do with this part now is take derivatives. This is going to be a little lengthy because you have product rule, at least in this one. So let's do what we can. Y sub P prime, first derivative of that, would just be an A here. You lose the B. Here we have a product rule. First, CX times the derivative of the second. That would be a 2 e to the yuck, e to the 2x. Okay. Plus the second times the derivative of the first, C e to the 2x. And then this one is not a product rule. It's just a 2 e to the 2 e e to the 2x. That's why I don't like to use e because writing it, you can tell the difference. But if you're just listening to it, that's capital E, the coefficient, undetermined coefficient, little e, the exponential function. Okay. Now. <clears throat> We got to continue and do your y particular double prime. Okay, you lose the a now, that goes to zero. So here we have the first, which is a 2cx times the root of this gets you another 2, so that's going to be a 4cx e to the 
2x, that's the first times root of the second, plus the second times root of the first, there's another 4, c e to the 2x, because the derivative of cx is just c. I left off my 4 though, I said it but didn't write it. Okay, and then here we're going to have a plus 2 c e to the 2x, and here we're going to have a plus 4 e, capital E, little e to the 2x. Okay, now we can combine some terms here, so let's do it. 4 c x e to the 2 x plus this is 4 and 2 is 6 c e to the 2 x plus 4 capital E constant E exponential 2 x. Okay. Now that we've got our particular solution, first derivative and second derivative, less, oh my goodness, we've just gone over seven minutes. Sorry. I was thinking the last class when we went to 55, so sorry I wasn't paying close enough attention. All right. We are at the point in the text where we are going to plug in these. So we're on middle of page 145, just about the middle of the page. We're going to plug in these values we had. And let me just check and make sure we've got the same values. Okay. Well, they skipped so many steps, it's hard to tell. Uh, so we'll just pick up and go from where they've got it, okay? Um, I wish we had time to clear it out so I could show you the steps, but they're skipping them, so I guess we'll skip them too and just uh, and write those in. Middle of the page, 3, I mean 145. Homework exercises here would be, and this is a long section, any of the odds 1 through 25. Okay, and I don't know that we've done initial value problems yet. Let's just stop there, 1 through 25, and we'll pick up the rest of those next time. The question is, I think we'll finish this section and maybe start talking about variation and parameters, but I'm not sure we'll get very far in it. Okay, any questions so far? Sorry, it was just you. Glad you were here, but I don't know where the two guys were. X chromosome showed up, the Ys did not. Any questions? All right, don't hear any answers, so I'll assume that means a no. So we'll end the meeting for everybody, and we'll pick up. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Cancel this. Okay, let's go back to where we were. I'm sorry. I looked at the clock wrong. We've got time, okay? I've got to move these things out of the way. It's 3.45 we leave and not 3.30. I said we were seven minutes over. We weren't there yet. We go till 3.45. I don't know where my brain is today. Let's see if we can clean this up some from where we had it, okay? So our y double prime, which we have here, here will be 4 c x e 
to the 2x. Now why that x didn't show up here I don't know but that is an x. Okay. Plus 6 C E to the 2x plus 4 capital E constant E E to the 2x that takes care of that term okay y prime here is going to be minus 2 times this so that'll be a minus 2 a minus 4 c x e to the 2 x minus 2 c e to the 2 x minus 4 e e to the 2 x okay I'm doing this in my head very fast so I could be making mistakes and then our y sub p is up here and it's minus 3 times that so it's minus 3 a x minus 3 b minus 3 c x e to the 2 x minus 3 e e to the 2 x and that's supposed to equal, didn't leave myself enough room, did I? 4x minus 5 plus 6x e to the 2x. All right. Now what we've got to do is combine like terms. Let's get all the terms with x e to the 2x in them. Okay. There's one. There's one, and there's one. Okay? Combine these coefficients. 4c minus 4c, well, I can do that. That goes to 0. Okay? And that gives me a minus 3c. That's interesting. Is equal to. And the only term with x e to the 2x here is 6. So that means c is equal to negative 2. All right. So I've taken care of this term, that term, that term, and this term. Now let me make sure I'm on the right track here before we get too far. c is equal to negative 2 got it okay now let's do all the terms of e to the 2x now why these aren't showing up I don't know there's e to the 2x there's e to the 2x there's an e to the 2x there's an e to the 2x and there's an e to the 2x okay so let's see what we've got 6 times a minus 2, because we do know what that is already. Okay, so that's going to be a minus 12. Because we know what C is, so we've done that one. Plus 4E, we don't know what that one is. Okay, we've done that one minus 2 times 2 that's a plus 4 okay we've taken care of that one and here is a minus 4 that's taken care of that one too okay and a minus 3 e okay and that's equal to 0 because we have no e to the 2x terms over here so that's equal to 0 so that tells us that minus 3e is equal to eight so e 
is equal to minus 8 thirds. Did I get that one right? No, they got minus 4 thirds. Uh, I got a minus 3c, they got a minus 2c. Um, and now I have run out of time. So it's going to be almost impossible to go back and reproduce this. Um, so we're just going to have to pick up from where they left off again uh, and see if we can go from there. So same place, same assignment. Sorry, I wish I had looked at the clock right and done my head right. Um, but we'll pick up middle of page 145 next time. Sorry about that. Let me go back and do the stop sharing again. You've already heard basically how we're going to end the term. Um, let me say it for the other two who are not here. Please get your research paper in by Wednesday. Now, I will give you, normally I say by class time on Wednesday, if you get it in any time Wednesday, that's up to 11.59 p.m. Wednesday, I'll give you credit for it without any loss of points. So if you get it to me today, you still get that one bonus point for November. Get it to me tomorrow or Wednesday, you get your score. If you give it to me Thursday or later, you start losing points. So please get me the research paper as soon as possible. Okay, your earlier test, I need those in by Wednesday. Because after class on Wednesday, I will be... Uh, posting sometime after class your final exam. Uh, I think I'll have it ready for you by class time, but I won't know which questions there will be bonus and which will be. I've got a test already prepared, but I won't know how far we get. So at class time on Thursday, I mean on Wednesday, I will show you the test and tell you these are the ones you do, these are the optional ones, because I'm pretty sure we're going to have optional ones, because we're not going to get too far in variation of parameters. So that's on the test. So I'll, we'll go over that, and then I'll post the test sometime after class is over with. Okay, please do the student course evaluations, okay? They were posted, I think, last week sometime or maybe the week before, but I believe it was last week. So they're very late with that. It's the same ones we've used before, as far as I know. It's called, oh goodness, I can't think of it, uh, Smarty Val, Smarty Val. Uh, but they had trouble, as everything has had trouble, linking it to Banner, okay? It used to be on the website, it used to be, you know, all sorts of places, but Banner is a very awkward package. Why the state decided on it, I don't know. But anyway, we're stuck with it, uh, or at least y'all are stuck. Well, no, you're going to be gone before I will, okay? But anyway, uh, that's why, or at least the excuse of why they didn't have student course evaluations out sooner. Okay, so please get those done also. Now, there's no deadline on those, but I would say, before you shut down at the end of the term, please do the student course evaluations. That means you can wait until even after finals week, but they're not going to be open that long. I don't know how long after finals week, but please get them done shortly after finals week or before. You can do them now if you want to. Okay. Any questions? Okay. She already left. So take care. We'll see you on Wednesday.